chapter 21. Min Lee and the buffalo boy pushed through the crowd as the sun burned the tops of, burned the tops of their heads. Min Lee, used to the spare harvests of her village, couldn't help gaping at the tall mounds of food for sale at the market of green abundance. The street and open courtyard were filled with umbrella-covered stands and stalls, flaunting jade-colored cabbages, pearled cucumbers, purple eggplants, tangy oranges. Glossy sugared hawthorn berries like rubies on a stick made Min Lee's mouth water. I don't see the king anywhere, Min Lee said. Well, maybe he's not here yet, the buffalo boy said. I don't know if I'll find him here, Minley said. Now in the daylight, the buffalo boy's friend didn't seem as extraordinary. Extraordinary. What would the king be doing at a street market anyway? She said he'd be here, so he will, the buffalo boy said, his mouth making a stubborn line. Hey, get away from that! A vendor yelled as the buffalo attempted to eat a frosty green lettuce. The buffalo boy quickly pulled him away. Get your buffalo out of here, the vendor shouted, as red-faced as the radishes he was selling. I better take him away, the buffalo boy said, pulling the buffalo's head away from the arrays of tempting food. He's hungry. I should take him to pasture. I'll stay here, Minley said. You don't need... You don't need to look for the king with me. Okay, said the boy. If you need a place to stay tonight, you know where my hut is. If not, maybe I'll see you around. Good luck. Thanks, Minley said as he care carelessly waved goodbye. She realized that she might not see him again. Before he disappeared from sight, she grabbed the last coin out of her bag and ran to him. Wait, Minley said. Here, take this. No, the boy laughed. I don't need that. You keep it. But, Minley started, but he had already turned around. Goodbye, she heard him call, and the buffalo snorted a farewell as well. Minley smiled wryly to herself. Now what? She thought as she wandered past stalls, weaving around merchants and customers. How am I supposed to find the king here? Please, spare a piece of fruit for an old man. A voice creaked. Min Lee turned around and saw a wrinkled poor man begging at a peach stand. He was dirty and bent, and his clothes looked as if they were made from rags used to, wa used to wash floors. Please, he begged the peach vendor. I'm so thirsty. One small peach, your smallest. Go away, old man, the fat vendor said. No money, no peach. Please, the beggar said again, weakly. Pity a tired old man. Get away from here, you worthless beggar, the vendor spat out, or I'll call the guards on you. The vendor's loud voice had attracted attention from passers-by, and a small crowd began to form in front of the peach stand. It's disgraceful to treat an old man like that, murmured someone. Just give him a peach. All of you are so generous with my property, the vendor glared at the crowd. If you care so much, buy him a peach. As Min Lee watched the beggar's hand out, hands outstretched and shaking with hunger, she felt a sharp pain inside of her. It reminded her of Ba reaching out with his last chopstick full of rice for her fish. The copper coin she had offered the water buffalo the, the buffalo boy was warm in her hand. She could almost feel her heart beating against its round edges. Here, she said, handing the vendor the coin. Then she picked the largest peach on the stand and handed it to the old man. He bowed to her gratefully and eagerly ate the peach. Forgetting about the inner city and the palace for the moment, Min Lee watched him. In fact, as if under a spell, the whole crowd stood and watched him swallow the fruit until he held a peach pit in his hand. Thank you, the beggar said in a much stronger voice. And he bowed to the onlooking people. 
The peach was so delicious, I wish for all of you to be able to taste it. If you would humor an old man and stay a little while longer, I'll share my good fortune. The old man took a small stick out of his pocket and bent down. In the dirt next to the black bricks, he dug a small hole and planted his peach pit. He stuck his stick upright in the little mound and then asked for water. Min Li, now completely fascinated, took out her water jug and handed it to him. As he poured water onto his stick, it trembled, and was she imagining it? It seemed to grow, and it was growing. The stick grew higher and higher and thicker and thicker until it was the width of Minley's arm. When she could no longer see the top of it, pink flowers and branches began to blossom out of it. As the sweet scent of flowers filled the air, Minley realized the stick had become a peach tree. The crowd of people seemed to realize this too as they all gaped at it open mouth. Even the stingy vendor left his fruit stand to stare at it in awe. Like pink snow, the petals fell from the tree and made a soft carpet on the dirt. Green leaves sprouted, and as they cascaded over the branches, pale moon-colored balls like pearls developed, almost as if they were small balloons being blown with air. They grew into round fruit, blushing pink and red as they developed. Soon the tree was heavy with them, and the air was full of the enchanting smell of ripe peaches. Children gathered round and stared longingly at the fruit while the adults gulped while their mouths were watering. Finally, the old man reached up, plucked a peach from the tree, and handed it to one of the people in the crowd. Please, he said, waving his hand, help yourself. The crowd needed no other urging. Young children climbed the tree and passed down the fruit, while the taller adults simply stretched and grabbed. A boy with a tired horse climbed onto its back to reach an especially red peach that called him. Before long, everyone's mouths were full of soft, sweet peach and groans of delight. Even the peach vendor, his stand forgotten, stood under the tree with his eyes closed and peach juice dribbling down his mouth. Minley, however, didn't join the Feast of Peaches. If I hadn't been eating peaches all the way to the city, Minley said to herself, I'd be the first one climbing the, this tree. But as she was slightly tired of peaches, Minley saw that no one else, Minley saw what no one else did. She noticed that every time someone plucked a peach from the tree, a peach from the fruit stand disappeared. The beggar is using the vendor's pe peaches for his tree. Min Li laughed to herself as she glanced at him through the fruit-eating crowd. He was watching with an amused look, and suddenly Min Li saw that the beggar wasn't really old at all. He must be a magician. He can help me get into the inner city. Min Li edged toward him. As she weaved her way to him, the last peach was picked from the tree, and the leaves and branches began to disappear. The tree trunk seemed to shrivel into itself, and it grew thinner and shorter. The crowd had finished their peaches, and when the ground was littered with peach pits, and the ground was littered with peach pits, when Minley finally reached the beggar, the tiny twig of the tree vanished underneath the pile of peach pits, and the beggar turned to leave. Wait, Minley said, and grabbed his arm. However, as Minley took hold of his sleeve, sleeve, it pulled back and a glint of gold shone. Hastily, the beggar pushed, his, pushed back his sleeve, but the quick glance was enough for Minley to see what he wore, see that he wore a gold bracelet in the shape of a dragon. They stared at each other as Min Lee's quick-thinking mind somersaulted. Only the Imperial family is allowed to use the image of a dragon, Dragon had said. Everyone knows that a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings. 
said the buffalo boy. The words flashed in her mind, and Minley could scarcely breathe. They're wearing a dragon, Minley gasped. Only the is allowed to wear a golden dragon. You must be, you must. Where's that beggar? An angry, an angry shout cut through the chaos. Minley recognized the vendor's voice. He stole my peaches. I'll get him. Quickly, the beggar shook off Minley from his arm and began to run. She stared in shock as she finished her sentence. You must be, Minley whispered to the ragged, disappearing figure, the king.